Eric Lauber, and I'd like to talk about addiction. One of the worst things about substance use disorder is the stigma attached to it. Labels like junkie or druggie don't help anyone, and the stigma and shame can prevent some people from seeking treatment. Many of us have outdated ideas that are only informed by stereotypes in movies and TV shows. In reality, substance use disorder is the result of a gradual rewiring of the brain's hardware and software. Choices made early on turn into cravings that are incredibly difficult to control. But many people have won this fight and are leading healthy, productive lives. Meet a few of them at talkaboutaddiction.tv. And if you have questions or want to talk to somebody, call the crisis line at 877-333-2470. Labeling and stereotyping are not helping. Go to talkaboutaddiction.tv to learn more. Remember, recovery and prevention are possible if we talk about it. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. The best way to start your day. Rise and shine! David and Friends on WTYM. Katanning. 1380 AM WTYM, House of FM 103.7. Glad to have you with us on the ride this morning. At, uh, right now, 16, almost 17 past the hour, 9 o'clock. I have with me on the phone Mike Craffick. He is with the Armstrong Indiana Clarion Drug and Alcohol Commission. Very long title for, the, for them, but uh, they start out Armstrong, then Armstrong, Indiana, then Armstrong, Indiana Clarion. They just keep kind of expanding their reach into different communities. But uh, they've been here for a long time. But, Mike, whenever they had the meeting last night about you, the, your commission purchasing the First Church of God property on Woodward Avenue in downtown Catanning, um, the, the crowd was very upset. They did not want anything uh, that was associated with someone who has a drug issue or an alcohol issue. They didn't want them there in their community. They're part of the community. But, um, but I think... You know, some of it, and, and I think Cammie Am- Anderson last night actually did a, a, a really good job trying to explain to them that um, that this is not a a center like uh, like Ark Manor where you go in and you stay there for treatment and um, or you come out on their outpatient clinic where they, they go in and out. And uh, so you have people coming in and out all the time of, of treatment. But this is more of a recreational complex. Am, am I correct in, in, in kind of putting it that way? Absolutely. It's not a residential facility. We will not be housing anybody, so it's not a residential treatment center like Ark Manor. It is not a recovery house uh, where people will will live there and stay there. Um, This is, well, one, primarily we're moving our office uh, from Vine Street to this location, to this proposed location. Um, So we will do the same services that we have been doing less than a half a mile away, uh, which is case management and recovery support. And what we do there is we help people access treatment. So if somebody has a drinking or a a drug problem that they'd like to get help with, we do an assessment and help them get connected to the services that they need. Uh, So we will still continue to do that there. And Cammie had mentioned at the meeting last night, also whenever we host meetings, like we have the Drug-Free Communities Coalition meetings, that we host, and currently we have to rent out the Belmont complex to be able to host those meetings because we don't have the space available uh, at our current location to get the amount of people that attend those meetings to come in. Um, So having that availability will help and will offer us the opportunity to engage the community because that's what those, those coalition meetings are about, engaging the community in the solution of trying to help people that are struggling with substance use. Now, so this is going to be a kind of a recreational recovery community center. So basically, uh, someone who's in recovery, not necessarily that that they're, you know, currently using, but that they're in recovery. Uh they she was saying that last night, for instance, they may have a a a, a meeting or a doctor's appointment, let's say at, at noon, and they may have um uh, you know, a, a special meeting at night that they go to, but the, 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 that part between the day, that between 12 noon and 6 p.m., let's just say, is very difficult for them because there's technically nowhere for them to go or nowhere for them to con- to continue to point themselves in the direction of, um, of, of staying recovered, staying, you know, uh, not using. And uh, so you're saying this is a place to come that they that you could direct energies uh, in a different format. Is that what I'm understanding? 
Yeah, so and that that's the other component of it, right? So there's the offices and continuing to do what we're we're doing, but because of the size of the building it would allow us to add some additional components and that's the recovery center aspect of it. Uh so using myself as an example in 2008, I was going to partial at Arc Manor, which was 8:30 to noon, 5 days a week, Monday through Friday. And then uh, typical recovery meetings don't start until 8 p.m., 7.30 at night. So I had between noon and 7.30 or 8 to fill my time. Um, now, at this point, I wasn't employed, uh, so I had to find ways to do things that didn't involve using drugs and alcohol. And leading up to that point, all the people that I knew, all the people that I hung out with, that's what they were still doing. So if I went back to some of my friends or people that I was hanging around, it was very easy to get drawn back into um, that cycle of relapse. So what I ended up doing was spent a lot of time by myself, isolating, probably played more video games. It was probably uh, wasn't really beneficial, wasn't benefiting my recovery process. And that's why I'm so passionate about having this as an option here in Catanning is to give people a way to be constructive, to rebuild their lives, because being engaged in recovery is more than about not not using. It's about repairing and rebuilding your life. So if we can help people by teaching them some life skills around budgeting or building a resume, um, talking about how to seek and find employment, how to sustain employment, could even do things like a cooking class or just different you know, we really want to make this what the community wants. So we'll hear from people in the recovery community as to what what do they need, what are they looking for out of this, and really tailor kind of what we do in the in the recovery center around that. Um, but again, I can't stress this enough. It will not be a, a treatment facility or a place where people live. We're not moving people in from other counties uh, to come into this area. We are focusing our effort on the individuals that live here, the residents of Armstrong County. That's who's going to access this center. And let's also talk about this, too, because last night, Cami Anderson, your executive director, uh, who I've known, I've interviewed her many times as well, and I've known her in the past, um, she was trying to explain to them, because they kept saying, well, what's going to happen is all these drug dealers are going to come basically on the property and they're going to, you know, the, the drug activity is going to increase because these people are going to go outside of the building and all of a sudden they know it at, at 10 o'clock in the morning they're going to meet X person and they're going to do a drug deal. But Cami kept saying, no, that's not the way it goes. Can you kind of, it, it, I don't know that that message was heard very clearly, but I want to talk about it because there, there, there is a difference. Can you kind of go into that a little bit? Sure. So the people that, that come to us and the people that will come to visit the center are people that want to be in recovery. They're, they're not looking to continue using. So they're looking to add supports and, and resources so they can be successful. So they are not looking for drugs. Um, so therefore, there won't be the demand. Um, so I don't, I don't anticipate or expect um, drug dealers to target our, our office or, or this center. And we've actually, since we've been on Vine Street, haven't had any issues like that whatsoever. We've not had anybody um, harassing or soliciting our clientele that come to our office for help trying to sell them drugs or lure them back into their addiction. Um, the thing about the recovery process is when you are doing well, you want to be around other people that are doing well. And what, what we want to do with this is model it after the recovery center that exists in Newcastle, which is in Lawrence County. So they've had a program like this for the past 10 years. And with their recovery center, it requires membership. So to access and visit the recovery center, you have to sign up to be a member. Uh, so in order to do that, we can have some stipulations in place in terms of what you need to do to be able to access the recovery center and, and, and use the facility. Anybody can come to us to get help, but to engage in the recovery center component of it, um, you have to actively be engaging in the recovery process. And, uh, and again, this is not the treatment part of this. This is not you know where, where they're coming there and they're getting 
um, you know, Suboxone or whatever. Uh, it's it's not that at all. Correct. Because we've had that on South Jefferson and right across from our studios for there was a doctor for about three years or so that practiced it, and and that was. And that was a very difficult time. I and you know I was one of the, the people who fussed about it because uh, of the the amount of um, not just drugs uh, that that was being transacted, but but the the um, <clears throat> the burglaries that took place. Uh, that some of the people that were coming in went up the street and and um, you know uh, stole stuff out of Family Dollar. And I mean it just th there was a lot of elements here. So I understand <clears throat> the concern of the people in the third and fourth ward up there. The problem is, is they're they're not, it's 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 not being compared properly. So in other words, you know, you're you're talking about you know a recovery center, a recreational facility, rather like like they like Cammy talked last night and said, well, after the church is going to use for a couple of years, use the uh, the uh, the church sanctuary auditorium for their church services. Do they get the new one built? But then when they move out, one of the thoughts were to take that auditorium and make it into a gymnasium. So, you know, all this that you're talking about doing is, is more recreational in, in methods. It would almost be like putting in, um, you know, a health club or, of some sort, but not to that extent. But, but that's, a, that's, that's the kind of thing. It isn't a, a thing where someone's going to come and get specific treatment. Correct. Right. It's apples and oranges. Uh, so we are definitely not providing any medication, uh, and we are not providing any counseling. We're not a licensed drug and alcohol treatment facility, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't have a medical physician that would be prescribing any medication um, on our staff. That's, that's not what we do. If that's what somebody needs, we will help get them connected to those resources. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I, I can't state that clearly enough that that is not what we're going to be doing here. We want to introduce people into healthy lifestyles and to be able to re-engage in some of the hobbies that their addiction had, whether you want to say taken from them or that they left behind because of some of the consequences of their substance use. I know for me in particular in early recovery, engaging in sports again was a really big component to me being successful early on. I can remember playing at the YMCA. There was a basketball, a men's basketball league, and we had a team that was all people that were in recovery, and we went down every week and competed in this basketball league. And I can't tell you how important that was. Yeah, po me. positive positive activity is so important during a recovery process because you, you have to replace what you were doing before with something positive, something else, because you can't have a vacuum or it doesn't work. And that's that's one reason that they have trouble with, with people staying in recovery because they have to have that support system. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a statement and then I'm, we're going to have to go because our, we're, our time's up. But, you know, it's interesting how many of these people, their lives are touched by people that are either addicted to drugs or alcohol but yet they invited them home for Thanksgiving or they, they went out together. In fact, they go to church together. You know, there's, there's people in the sanctuaries right now of churches that are having these issues. And, you know, yet, you know, you're trying, hang on. Shutdown sequence initiated. Shutting down. Yet you're trying to say, don't, we don't want them in the community, but they're in the community because the church can have programs that go along with a lot of this even in their Sunday schools, even in their youth programs, whatever. So, okay, Mike, I, I don't have time to even develop that, but uh, Mike Kraffick's been on the phone with me today. We've been talking about the Armstrong, Indiana Clarion Drug and Alcohol Commission's purchase of, or the wanted purchase, they want to purchase that they haven't yet, of the First Church of God in Katani. Mike, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, and I, I would just want to say in, in closing that if uh, people in the community had questions or wanted more information to, to give our office a call. Oh, there you go. 100% of the recommended daily dose of fun during your workday. Have some fun! AM 1380 and FM 103.7 WTYM. Katanning.